Let's do another remote ID test. Does the operator location, is that tied up to the home position, takeoff position of the drone, or does it update or follow the controller? Let's find out and see if this is a hack that will prevent you from being detected with a regular cell phone from somebody in close proximity. One of you wrote me, if I'm correctly informed, the drone is emitting the launch point or the home point as the operator location. So this is of course something that we would uh, test out. So what I would do now is I would launch the drone and put it in the middle of this uh, parking lot. Then I will make sure that everything is being detected uh, with the, the drone scanner app that's currently installed on this Android phone. And then I will move myself to another location to see if the home point is actually, or the operator location on the app is actually updating. Which leads me to another question that I've seen asked a few times uh, because I kept I keep saying that it only works on Android and it is true that you can find uh, the application for iOS in uh, the App Store but uh, and you can also download it and you can install it but it doesn't work because the, what it needs to do is it needs to be able to do some sort of Wi-Fi scanning of external uh, Wi-Fi signals and that is currently blocked in uh, iOS so at least I haven't been able to make uh, the iOS uh, version uh, work uh, on my uh, iPhone 12 plus Pro Max. <laughs> so if you have a, t a tip to make that work, then let all of us know in uh, the comments below. Another question that have been asked is that what about uh, drones uh, below 250 grams? They are not transmitting a remote ID. Let's take the Mini 4 Pro as an example. And uh, if only if you mount the plus battery in there, it will, according to my information, uh, start to transmit the remote ID. So what if you took some of the other batteries, like the ones from the Mini 3 Pro, putting that into the drone just to see that it exceeds the 250 grams, what then? So even if you're getting the warning uh, that the drone is no longer compliant with C0 because with the Mini 3 Pro battery, you will exceed the 250 gram weight limit, you are not getting the option to type in your operator ID somewhere in the interface, similar to, to what uh, we were capable of doing with this one as we are going under controls here uh, no under safety and we scroll down we have this point that's called uas remote identification and under this section of uh, the dji fly app you'll be able to enter your operator id including the three digits the three dig secret digits um, that will allow you to submit uh, your operator registration number inside the app. That option is not available in uh, the Mini 4 Pro, even if uh, you are loading it with a heavier battery. All right, let's get this test going. So it updated the home point where I am right now. So what we can do now is we just position the drone somewhere, somewhere here. Let me just, this is the parking lot where all the bikers came when I was testing the Mini 4 Pro. I don't know if you can remember that. <laughs> We're not testing the range here. I did that in the, one of the other tests. So let's just put the drone here somewhere and let it look at uh, the car. We can go maybe a little bit further up just for the sake of it. Like this. So now I will take the phone here and uh, I will launch the drone scanner app. And if we are lucky, it can sort of find the position here. Yeah, it's already found it. So you could see that the, my drone operator ID that it ends at 5988. And you can see, we can already see it here. Yeah, maybe we should just uh, hook it up to a access point here. So we can get a map. You can see uh, if you look at the, this place, it's basically the same. You can see the parking lot here. We can see the drone. And we can see that um, the home position or the operator location, that is located exactly where the car is parked. So now we have uh, the drone up and running here. So what we would do now is uh, we will start the car and then I will go to the other end of the parking lot and put the phone here so everything is good and then we'll go to
to the other end of the parking lot and it just put spotlight on uh, on the drone so you can see that it's uh, I'm actually doing it so so as you can see now I move to the other location here the other end and you can see that it actually updated the the operator position then if we go to the other side here we can try it again Let's see what's going on Let's see I have the video that follows me you can see I'm going under the drone now so right now I lost it more or less but I'm driving back to the same location as I was before no it's there again so so it actually follows as it is right now so we can just let it sit for a sec here stop the car <laughs> so see how long it goes before it actually updates so yeah so now it updates again so basically what we learned here is that it actually follows uh, the remote and not the takeoff point so you can't really hide in the bushes with your controller and then uh, people are not uh, yeah capable of uh, detecting where you are uh, so let's get the drone back here and of course we can't do precision landing now <laughs> because I moved the car compared to the home point so So as you saw on the distance test, you need to be quite uh, close in uh, close proximity uh, to uh, yeah where the uh, drone operator is located to be able to detect the person. But one of you, um, oh, actually donated two euros. <laughs> That's nice. Feel free to do that. That's very uh, appreciated. So apart from that, one of you asked, uh, will uh, the authorities have better equipment and be able to spot the remote ID from further distances away? And, and of course, that's possible. That, uh, there's no uh, problem. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that uh, the officials, they will have much better equipment for doing this. Let's hope this technology is only reserved for the authorities. If that is the case, I have absolutely no problem with that. And then there was this extra comment, uh, which is not uh, influencing us, but it's still interesting to know that in the UK, they're working on network remote ID so technically they will be able to see all drones tra transmitting remote ID from anywhere in the UK. That would be a different story actually if there was some sort of a map that you could log into and you could see all the drone flyers all over the world and um, <laughs> all over the country. <laughs> I would be a lot more scared about that than uh, just somebody picking up a cell phone like this, trying to detect uh, where where you're flying. So, by the way, I have something that I want to share with you. Uh, maybe uh, you have already watched it, or maybe you were part of it yesterday when I gave a live teaching session. Uh, how I plan my uh, drone flights every time that I go on a commercial mission. What are the steps that I'm going through? I did a live teaching session um, with that yesterday. And I used some of the materials that was part of the Drone Like a Pro course that I released uh, this summer. Um, I'm thinking that I can uh, do more with this material that I spent a lot of time uh, developing, at least from the feedback that I got from the ones of you that have taken the course, that this has been very valuable. So uh, I will be start, uh, starting to do like these online teaching sessions uh, where we can have some live interactions. You can ask questions and you can do all sorts of <laughs> good stuff. I will, at least here in the beginning, I will do these uh, sessions uh, live uh, so everybody can uh, participate. But then I'm considering making those members only afterward. So if you want all the lessons, uh, all the, the, the teaching sessions in uh, one streak, then you should consider becoming a member. 
I think that's a super fair way to do this. And hopefully, if enough students are signing up as members uh, for the channel, we could do members-only live streams where we get into the bottom of all the nitty-gritty stuff about the regulations and the camera settings and all the, uh, the stuff that uh, you need help with. Let me know what you think about that idea in the comments below. Is there any other things that you want, to, uh, want me to test out with the remote idea? Then kindly let me know in the comments below. And uh, I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you did like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you on the next one.